You will fall in love with me. You will take me away from this place. Commentary number 126, 126, 126, 126, 126. New Patreon person, Proc the Croc, who had some kind of problem with his Facebook page. Um, probably because Facebook is for old people, and he is not old, he is young and beautiful, at least by lowered modern standards. Um damn <laughs> fuck sorry um our commentary is one of the most heartfelt um that i have done in the history of the show that has now gone well over two years which is really really great speaking of things that have lasted a long long time we're in the seventh year of tipping point and we are actually going to do a tipping point tomorrow night um, to help out Southern Fried, amongst other things, we're going to be talking to Todd. Um, his his team faces off against Manders' team in the we're not calling it, but it's the War Games for Southern Fried, uh, happening on Saturday against, unfortunately, um, Georgia and Clemson. So we'll see how they're going to do, but it's part of a bigger discussion that we're going to have about all these crowds that keep dropping for everybody. Um, is this the new standard? Is it because of COVID? What the hell's going on? Um, and we have a number of big shows happening this weekend, right? You got Southern Honor happening. Um, their last show before they're going to go for a thousand in October. Um, it seems more precarious than ever. They got more than 500 at their Rumble Jack show. What is this show going to do? Um, I don't know. I guess we're going to wait and see. But yeah, we're going to have the heartfelt commentary. Oh my God, unbox. We got to unbox. Okay, so this unboxing is a bit of a story. So yesterday I saw a friend of mine that I haven't seen in 23 years, she figured out. Her name is Robin. Um, we met in Hawaii. And 23 years later, she's showing up in Orlando with her 16-year-old son. Not mine. Um, and they're going to go to Universal. So we hung out last night. Um, and he, the boy, wanted to go to the Florida Mall because he wanted to buy some. He's got a job. He's going to get his first paycheck. So he wanted to buy some jewelry. He's a jewelry guy and he's a shoe guy. So it's like, let's go to Florida Mall. They got all that stuff there. So he got stuff. And then Robin, the sneaky minx, got me this, no doubt from the jewelry store. Um, so I thought I would unbox it for today. It's one of two things, uh, I'm pretty sure, but... I'm going to let you see it the same time I see it. I have no doubt this thing is ridiculous. <laughs> what the hell? It's a blinged out Buddha. I don't know what to make of this thing. But I do know what you do with these things. You put them on. Blinged out Buddha. Blinged out Buddha. Blinged out Buddha. My kids are going to steal it from me. Thank you, Robin, for the blinked out Buddha. Oh, Lord. Um, PCW Drew 42, Renegade 87, APW 51. You see what I'm saying about these crowds? And Anarchy Drew 70. I heard they're trying to tell some people 100. But when two different people who were at the show who told me what was up and who got what reaction in the show are telling me 70, I'm honestly inclined to believe it. If somebody wants to dispute it, who was there, you're welcome to. But uh, I do trust the people that told me that it was 70. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. They had the two biggest crowds they've ever had of well over 300. Um, then they dropped to 150 at the last show, which is still a really good crowd, but 70 that harkens back to uh, the days after this is why, right? Why we wrestle. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, it's a rough show and, you know, just stuff is happening right now, right? Wrestlers are having to call out because of the vid and for other reasons. It's really hard to put stuff together. We'll see if this weekend, because it's big, you got Southern Fried blowing off. 
their super long angle. So let's just be blunt and honest because that's what we try to do. Um, what would what would be deemed what you would expect for them to draw for a war games match and a blow off of an angle that has gone on for many months, even years. Um, three fifty, right? They drew over five hundred for Shindig, and this is the big blow off. So I'd say three fifty is a fair benchmark for them. Um, Southern Honor. Uh, I'm sure they're hoping, but, you know, for this show, I think it's headlined by Austin Towers against David Ali, their champion. I mean, 400 would seem to be a per like a pretty good thing to, to shoot for, especially if they're going to try to get a thousand in October. But I mean, I I'm sure this is a tough time to run a show, isn't it? I mean, it, let's just be honest with ourselves. Like things are uncertain. Last show I went to here in Florida, I mean, they got a big old crowd in spite of some adverse conditions of like heavy rain and all that kind of stuff. But you got to wonder um, when and if things are going to fall off. They had a show in Clearwater, Florida last night that did very well, FIP. Um, so what's that mean? I don't know, um, but I think it's worth discussing. I'm sure Larry and I are going to address it tomorrow night on The Tipping Point. Here's something that I thought was really, really, really cool. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do a new feature because goodness knows I don't do enough and I don't do enough videos. My apologies for that. I'm just kidding. I'm wrapping up the article on Mickey Knuckles. So I'm going to get that out um, this week in anticipation for the stuff that she's got coming up. Um, and I'm going to do this one called uh, Fine Wine or Good at the Time. What's that about? You're going to have to see. You're going to have to see. But I'm excited about that series. Um, can't wait to jump into that. This is kind of a cool thing. Uh, what is that? That's I, I play Marvel Contest of Champions. I've played it since the game started, so six or seven years ago. I played it just about every day since. It used to be part of my 24 hours on President's Day thing until I actually achieved my goal of being one, number one in the world in one of their arenas. And then I, and last year I went to something different. But I still play Marvel Contest of Champions every day. So imagine my surprise and how happy I was. To see the folks from Up, Up, Down, Down, uh, you know, Xavier Woods, Adam Cole, other people who get involved in that thing, um, having a contribution to Marvel Contest of Champions and a little challenge that you could do, which was hard as shit, by the way. I was so pissed. I freaking, I was, I got a, I got a freaking message, uh, Xavier, and just go like, dude, you're freaking killing me with your stupid challenge. But, uh, but it was really cool to see. And then they played Marvel Contest of Champions and all that kind of stuff. So, just a reminder, I mean, that Xavier Woods deal, man, that's his thing. That channel is his baby, and he is making it work, and it is really awesome to see. And wrestling right now is in such a tumultuous time. I mean, you got this pay-per-view where CM Punk is going to wrestle and all this other stuff going on, and NXT with the shittiest logo in recent memory. So it is nuts. It is nuts. Um, oh, went way that thing down. Um All right. Um, before we get to, uh, I'm, I want to I want to show these clips. I'm gonna show these clips. Um, first, this thing that I just can't look away from. Here it is. Um, dude, I messed up the sound on that thing, but was it not fascinating? What's the lesson, Steve? Well, one, it was just cool to watch, but watching them play this balloon ball thing 
Um, what were the rules of it? Because there were definitely rules. You weren't allowed to hit it down. You had to hit it on a level playing field or hit it up. And how much intensity and how much interest did they wring out of that? They really pushed it to the limit. They really made it exciting. It really seemed like there were times where it was going to end that it didn't. And it was, and it sort of harkened back to the feeling of that's the kind of game I played when I was a kid, or that's, I've definitely done things like that before with friends or blah, 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 blah. So those two feelings, one, that you really kept people on the edge of their seat in a sort of a different way than we're used to. And two, it harkened back to this feeling of this vibe of I'm familiar with this. My challenge to wrestlers, how can you capture those two feelings in your matches this weekend or the next time you wrestle or in the future? Those two things, right? What can you do to keep us on the edge of, the, of our seats as fans without doing the same things that people have been doing to do that? How can you explore a different way to tell a story that engages and builds? There are other ways besides the ways that are commonly done now. And how can you recapture the feeling for the audience of like, oh, that's familiar. That feels familiar. So they engage with you and not their phone. That should always be your challenge. They should be able to take a picture of your match and people are actually looking. I don't remember the last time I saw a picture in indie wrestling where people were watching and actually had an expression on their face where they're emotionally connecting as opposed to passively watching with their arms crossed or worse, this. And Balloon Ball will lead the way. Um, let's take a look at this thing. And again... And again, Eddie fucking Guerrero and that fucking arm drag. How cool is that shit? How cool is that shit? It's amazing. And then finally, before we get to the commentary, yeah, this is going to be a relatively quick one, but we're going to have a whole lot to talk about next week for sure. Um, I got to show you, uh, you know, I like to show you stuff that's really great. I should do those Hurricane Rana's. That Eddie Guerrero arm drag is like one of the best ones I've ever seen. Maybe the best one I've ever seen. So it's only fair that I show you the greatest chair shot of all time. Get a chair. What? <laughs> Not so much. Not so much. It's all fake meatball. All fake. All fake. Commentary. Here's what our commentary is about. Um, the 10 things that people on their deathbed say they regret the most. How does this apply to wrestling? It applies to everything, jackholes. So just listen. Ha, huh, Buddha. Look at this. It's dope. It's even got the little bling look. Shiny. Like a bobble on a wealthy woman's neck. Um, ten things people regretted on their deathbed. Number ten, um, they wish they learned a second language. I really want to wrestle in Japan. I would really love to wrestle in Mexico. Why don't you learn the language and see if that impresses them a lot? Kenny Omega learned Japanese. Think that helped him? I bet it did. But Steve, but what? My kids picked up Spanish thanks to Duolingo and the other apps like that. Now, granted, they're young and beautiful and their minds are pliant and they're brilliant. You may be none of those things, but that doesn't mean that you can't learn another language. What's another advantage of learning another language? It does things to your brain that you can't even fully comprehend. It will make you smarter. Um, it will uh, 
it will help you in ways that you can't even imagine. Do I speak another language? Yes, I can speak conversational Japanese, though that is slipping because even when I talk to my Japanese mother, we spend all the time talking English. Frustrating. Um, and I also used to speak Hawaiian, which is a very easy language to pick up, and it, I, can, I almost never get to speak it, but at least I get to pronounce things correctly. In Hawaiian, since more Hawaii stuff um, comes up every day. Now, now white people are eating poke bowls. The hell's going on in this world um, number nine they wish they hadn't worked so hard maybe that's something that i'm going to say as well because i work really hard um we shall see later on i think i do a pretty good job of taking things in now how this applied to wrestling for me and i want to urge the wrestling people who are listening to this to do this as well um, whenever i would go to an area i would especially if it was someplace new for me, I would make it a point to get there early and actually take in the town. I never wanted to be that guy that was like when I was in full, like, you know, wrestled in all 50 states mode and all that kind of stuff. I always made sure I took things in. I got there. I ate at a local place. I didn't eat at McDonald's. Like, you know what I mean? Like try to take in the town as much as I could when I was there, including at times sampling the local talent. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the next one, better at expressing how they felt. That's important. Um, part of that is, you know, get the pictures. And part of that is just tell people straight up. I have not had a problem with that, right? Whether it's talking to my kids or friends of mine, but you could, everybody can always get better at that stuff. Expressing how you feel, especially if you're smart. Let me, let me throw that out there because how some people feel fucking idiots. I'm just expressing how I feel next. i uh, take better care of their body. How true is that stuff? And the older I get, the harder it is to maintain the weight that I want, but I continue to work out um, and continue to work on what I'm eating and that kind of stuff. I was really glad to see Huckabee lose weight. Um, I'm glad to see that Hanson has gotten on that same train, especially because Hanson's fucking young. Like, dude. Um, but we all know a number of people who are morbidly obese or people who are just falling apart at the seams and seemingly refuse to do anything about it. That is stupid. Take care of your body because that helps take care of your mind as well. Next. Be more selective with your relationships, especially your romantic interests. Um, maybe, uh, but I, I always feel like try things is a bigger thing nowadays. I think this is, you know, cause this is people on their deathbed. So these are old people who probably, you know, feel, feel like they wasted a lot of time on relationships that didn't work out. Maybe the key isn't just to be more selective with your relationships, um, but that could also mean friends and stuff like that. But, you know, be more willing to have things end and let things end. I don't know, but that's a good one. But it probably might apply to some of you more than others. We shall see. Not worrying so much is another one. I can definitely see this um, for myself, at least. Though I am constantly worried about this, that, and the other, and money, and all the rest of it. Of course, right? It's been rough. It's been rough for just about everybody. Uh, but not worrying so much. As opposed to putting yourself in a position to do something about something. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Move out of your comfort zone. That's never been my issue. <laughs> um, I'm always trying new things, and I'm willing to sort of step out there and give things the college try, not everything works. I would suggest more people do that. And stepping out of your comfort zone might be uh, wrestling for a different kind of promotion, out of state, um, not always traveling with your crew, um, getting bookings on your own. Trying shows out, and then if they don't work, that's okay. And if you're a person who's running a show, um, mixing things up a little bit in some way, shape, or form, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Um, give more to charity or give or donate your time or money more. Um, I made a conscious effort to start. I mean, this isn't just me like, yay. Um, but I did make a conscious effort 
um, four years ago to go like, I need to give back more in a, this sort of direct way. So I have uh, Extra Life, um, that charity that I help out as part of that. Um, it's good for the kids to see as well. And I like for the kids to see every year we tour the like children's hospitals so they can see other things going on and they can start thinking about contributing as well. It's important. And some might say like, oh, it's not really important to give. It's absolutely important to give back. Right. What do we say to the kids about money? Because I'm terrible with money. I mean, I have been. It's rough. But with the kids, they're really great with it because I told them, you know, at a young age, there's three things you do with money. You spend it, you save it, and then you give it away in equal measure. And that has them approach money in a different way. I think it's really good. Um, number nine, pursue your dreams and aspirations. Yes. And, but I had to be conscious of it. It's not all selfish stuff. I think that's something that I had to learn when I got older and I'm just imparting that wisdom to you. It's not just in pursuing your dreams. So, you know, like, yeah, I want to work in wrestling and I want to do all that stuff. And if that meant I had to carve out my own niche as I've done, that's what I do. Um, but it also meant like one of my aspirations is just to be the great father, just to be a great father. And I work very hard at it. Um, and I come up with things all the time, and I think my kids are the beneficiaries of that. And, and I had to lay that out as an aspiration. I'm going to be a great father. And not just saying it, not just virtue signaling it, but really consciously working on that every single day. And then the last one is spend more time with the people that you care about. For me, that's friends, um, because already with the kids, I'm, you know, and then I talk to my mom like every other day and um, that kind of thing. Uh, but also friends. Like it's really great when friends of mine come down to Florida or it's great when I can go up to Georgia. I mean, I'm going to be there in like three or four weeks. Um, you know, like spend time with the, the people that you care about and take pictures with them and interact with them and connect with them. And for all the people who like rant and rave about political bullshit every day, fucking devote your energy elsewhere that's my advice that you've got people that you're ignoring and that you're not giving as much to or charities that you're not giving as much to um, because you're spending all your time fucking shouting at the rain instead of opening up a fucking umbrella thinking that you're opening up an umbrella so wrestling can be put in any of these contexts of course um and it's just a matter of consciously making the effort to do these things. Or you can just watch your life be the same. And maybe for some of you, that's a great thing. But I would suspect that everybody could get a little better. I'm certainly going to go do the same. I'm going to go live a life worthy. Thank you, Robin, again for my freaking blinged out Buddha. I'm going to do something with this blinged out Buddha. I'm not sure. Tomorrow, by the way, Man Eater. Um, the shark video game that I play, the edition comes out and I have a big challenge related to that. So that's going to be taking up my lot of, a lot of my time, but I'm still going to get these wrestling videos out. And tonight I got to hook up my like GameCube slash Wii because that'll be my next video game project. I'm pursuing that thing because I want to do it. I like making money playing video games and I like uh, being part of that community and getting to be a bigger deal in that community. Pursue your shit, man, and uh, make it happen. Cool. This is a short one, but a sweet one. And I'll talk to you later. This. Oh, that Randy Orton mustache. Yikes, yikes, yikes. This has been Full Disclosure.